Hello, good, 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 good people, people, people. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, morning or evening, whenever you're listening to this. Good day. Good day to you, Tasneem. Hey, Andrea. Hey, Tasneem. Good to see you. Always. Same Always. here. Always. Always. Great to be seen. <laughs> it, yes. Okay. I'll yes. take that. And too. they say, and not viewed. But that is going. That was in our southern episode. <laughs> like Tyler that, Pe- Perry. Let it go. <laughs> We're going to come back. We love you, Tyler. Today's topic is uh, heavy on my heart. It's oh. heavy on my heart. How so, sis? Because I admit to knowing this place well. I think we both know it. I'm afraid that I might even model it sometime. I'm afraid that we probably have got some tats about this this place yeah, in this space, in this topic today. Yeah, and it's a, it's a good topic because it invites us to reimagine our lives. So if we can see it, then we can transform it. We can create practices that challenge these old notions. And what we're talking about, friends, is the idea that in order to be loved best, we must be small and in service. In order to be loved best, we must be small and in service service. You called it disappearing acts. I did. And that's I love. Disappearing in all of the relationships and all the ships. All the ships. All the ships. All and the ships. One thing that we have been adamant about and we are standing strongly in is that for season two, mm-hmm. we're talking about those stories and those tropes and those narratives that we no longer accept. They don't serve us. But in order for us to get there and say that they don't serve us, we have to allow them to come to the surface yeah. and, and talk about them. Yeah. And you know, I like the sense of transition. I do. They no longer serve They us. no longer. Because admittedly, some of these behaviors that we're not proud of, we did get something from them. We benefited some. Yeah. Yeah. Admittedly. So this is like coming, this is confession time, right? Like, I, we're not just pointing fingers and saying, you made me feel small. No, right. no, sir. No, ma'am. Right. And this is not, also not about blaming someone or some some place or institution or some, some beings mm-hmm. um, and just saying quickly how this is the way we're feeling when we disappear, that it's rooted in dominance Mm -hmm. or it's rooted in authority or it's rooted in control. Not always. Sometimes we contribute to that and we allow, if I openly give you my card to say, now disappear, Andrea, that's not necessarily, can I blame you for that? Sometimes we abandon ourselves. We vanish ourselves. We make ourselves disappear. Let's dig into this. You didn't even have to ask me to go. I opened the door myself. You're like, where are you going? I'm like, you didn't need me here. So I made myself disappear? Mm -hmm. Let's do this, Mm -hmm. Tasney. Mm -hmm. So what we want to, we're starting out with the challenge, and hopefully through the conversation, you will be thinking of ways in which you might relate to this, ways in which this topic resonates. So what we want you to be thinking about as we're talking about our own experiences are the places in your life maybe where you're disappearing, where you're playing small on purpose, are, for a purpose. Right. And of service to yes. someone else. You know, yes. we, we've learned how to be of service. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes we, we, we brag on the fact that, you know, I'm a servant. Yes. Servanthood. Mm-hmm. Servitude. Mm-hmm. It's who I am. Mm-hmm. But we also have learned to hide. Yes. We've learned to hide and we've learned to disappear. Yes. And yeah. these are our stories that we're sharing. Yeah. I remember this topic came up for me. I was um, reading an interview, I think, it with Serena Williams, um, Tennis Phenom. And I believe it was in O Magazine. And I think Oprah was asking Serena how her husband, I believe his name is Alex, the Reddit co-founder, um, how does he handle her success? Handle. How does he respond to it? How does he make sense of it in terms of balancing the role she also plays as wife and mother? And she said he pushes her to expand. That's right. To not play small. To not play to small. To not disappear. He will speak very seriously about, aren't you going to do that next tournament? Right. Aren't you going to do that next photo shoot? You are going to do that, right? Yeah, Don't yeah. you want to? Right. And so I think that, you know, for me, of course, I'm speaking about it now. It's been years since I read it. It 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 impressed me. Perhaps changed me and gave me a direction in which I wanted to grow. I want to surround myself with people who are not loving me best when I'm a shadow figure. No. Yeah. I want them to say, I want them to revel in all the air and space I take up. All of it. Yeah. yeah I want them right. to say, hey, wh- what you doing next? Yeah. What's the next thing you're writing or working on or publishing or producing? What are you thinking about? Yeah. I want them to revel in 
the bigness of my ambition for myself. And the bigness of all of the parts that, that, that make up who I am, right? Yeah. Because oftentimes we, um, we minimize. We minimize so much about ourselves. Um, and then we, we spoon feed people little bits and pieces of us because it goes back. And we've talked about this, this idea of you're too much. Oh, yeah. You're doing too much. You're being too much. You're just too extra and too much. Terrible twos. The t- how many times have we heard we're too much and we're too extra? And so when we are, are, when we hear that over and over and over again in relationship after relationship, after ship after ship, it doesn't matter. It could be job. It could be spouse. It could be girlfriend circle. It could be family. What happens is that we, those of us who say we are in service to others, we somehow feel as if we have to disappear in order for them to shine. We have to disappear in order for them to feel better about themselves. We have to disappear in order just so that we can keep the peace. We have to disappear so they will stay. Oh. Because God forbid that two people in their full selves can exist. Cannot occupy the same space Can't at occupy. the same time. It's not enough space in there. Not enough. I, I de- Isn't that something? Uh, we we, we got to uh, rewrite this. We have to rewrite this story. Yeah. We are so no longer examples we know. These. Go for it. Feigning weakness because you want someone to feel strong. That ranges from, oh, I can't open this jaw spaghetti. Can you help me? Can you help me? Ranges from that to actual not discussing things you've achieved and accomplished. Because it's a three become a threat. Or maybe someone else hadn't accomplished the things that you've accomplished. That part. And so you're going to mention yours only after they or, achieve or accomplish theirs. So don't mention it at all. Because or I was going to say, or don't even mention it or just minimize it. You just allow other people to speak on there about all of the things that they've done. And I have to say, Andrea, this is not necessarily an invisibility that someone asked you to perform. Sometimes we come into situations muted. Nobody asked you not to tell them that you have a podcast or that you're working on a book or that you, you know, about to drop some lyrics for your next album. Nobody said, Andrea, don't, don't discuss that. That might be too much. Sometimes we come in saying... Folk ain't ready. How you know you didn't even I, uh, you didn't even give them you chance. didn't even serve them who you are. You gave them the little little kibbles, and we give them these little kibbles because I think there's something there's something that has happened in our lives in the past, some things that have happened yes. to make us turn down that shine. I, I 100 percent believe you. We something. are not crazy. No, we, this we're is not learned this behavior no, that, because that something happened. You know, I'm a huge fan of Dr. Tama Bryant. Yes. She is sister of Dr. Jamal Bryant. I think her mother's name is Cecilia. If I'm wrong, please look it up. She comes from a family of great, empowered artist activists. She's beautiful. Um, On Instagram, of course, and has a podcast called Homecoming. And I say it that way because that's that's how how she she speaks. (laughs) Yes, She says, welcome home. And every time she says it, I feel welcomed. I'm like, thank you, girl. And I love that she says exactly what you're talking about. So she is a, um, actually, she's the president-elect of the American Psychology Association. Yeah. She talks about the fact that something happened. Something, ha- like, give yourself that grace to recognize that this behavior is a response to something. Yep. And so now we have to go about recognizing that that something that happened is not everywhere. Yeah. It's not under every single blanket behind every door. It's not in every relationship. But something happened that impacted us that made us go, it's not safe if I'm fully me. It's not acceptable if it's not fully me. Right? Yeah. It's not practical. It's not, um, it's, it's, it doesn't subscribe to that, that image of who we are supposed to be in these relationships because I am supposed to always be here in these relationships. So we have these preconceived notions of what these ships look like. Um, and when, you know, we have to ask ourselves, Tasmanian, what does this behavior um, ask me to give up of myself? How do we get to that point? And, and yes, there's something that caused us to want to disappear or caused us to even accept the notion of playing small and disappearing about ourselves. We've talked about this with our kids. We adamantly, adamantly, Tell them to show up in spaces. Show up. Don't let anybody tell you to play small. But yeah. in reality, 20 years prior to them coming into this this world, what were we doing? Mm-hmm. What have we been doing for the past X amount of years? You fill in the blank. Playing small to make other people feel comfortable. Yeah. Playing small or disappearing because it wasn't acceptable. Yeah. You laugh too loud. You too tall. Mm, you too opinionated. You too opinionated. 
Yeah. You why do you have to use so such much? big words? Why why can't you just speak regularly? Why you, <laughs> you have on them bright have colors this, all the time? Oh gosh, yeah. Yeah. Why can't you just fade to the back? Yeah. Why can't you just get in and just kind of blend in the crowd? Hmm? Dr. Tama has on, on her IG page, in unsafe spaces, you learn to hide, dilute, and dance around the truth of what you feel and think. In unsafe spaces. So if we sniff out judgment or critique or confusion, any kinds of questions about why you got to be the way you are, in unsafe spaces, we learn to hide, dilute, dance around the truth of what we think and feel. It's good to see you, she writes, in this season, standing and true. And that's that's powerful. That is know that you may be standing without a crowd, because again, I think that's that's I would love to challenge, and for those in our spaces and around us to challenge that idea that playing small will always mean that I'm alone. You'll lose some people on this on that journey, um, but when you finally take back the energy that you are serving to everyone else, take back that energy and put that energy back into yourself. You do stand alone. And that's okay. It is okay. Because that's part of the healing. Yes. If I may, another Dr. Tamer bite. (laughs) As you heal, you become less concerned with what other people think of you. You shift from reacting to living, from calculating to creating. It's not instant, but trust the process you are becoming. I would like to add to that. You shift from contorting to expanding. So now when someone walks in the room, I'm not trying to strategize which test name I need to be no. to fulfill their impression of me. Because there's only one really test. There's only one test name. And she's multi-layered she, and multi-dimensional. She is. She but is. she lives in one house. Yes. This body. Yes. And so if you walk into my space where I am, you might get variations of me, but it's still me. Yeah. And I have to trust that. Not that you'll take it, accept it, or celebrate it, but that however you respond, I'm good. But that burden doesn't lie on me anymore. Like, I, 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 it no longer serves me. To be concerned, there is freedom and there is liberation in that. We talk about Mm -hmm. liberation in these movements. There is liberation in living. Mm -hmm. When I get to the point that I realize it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you can't accept me and all myself and all my extraness and all my other things. That is liberation in living. That's what that looks like. Andrea, do you think it also points to the company we keep? Because I'm thinking even though part of me wants to fall headfirst into the waters of self-acceptance and self-love and says, I don't care what you think I'm good. It stings me sometimes. It, of course. And so then I think to myself, the way out of that thinking is to say, well, then I haven't yet found my people. And once I find my people who can revel in the Tasneemness, who can revel in the Andreaness, I will surround myself with them. I will pour into them. They'll pour into me. That is and now it's not a question of whether or not Conform so you can have company versus disappearing, make, making you feel comfortable or choosing yourself means you're going to be solitary. It's like, no, 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 no. Oh. You just have to choose the people who are going to be around you that uplift you. That's right. That speak well of you to you. Pray for you when you're not there. Right. Enjoy your ascension. Comfort you when you fall. All of those things. And if we haven't found it yet. It's not because we're too much. It's just because maybe we've been impatient in selecting who to keep in our fence. Yes. Maybe that's it. Maybe. 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 But playing small is not a way to get there. It's not, it's not an option anymore. It's not. It's not an not option anymore. anymore. It's not an option anymore. I think before we've talked about from this time forward, moving on now, it's not an option. Yeah. 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 So I have to... We, we know where we are now and we know where we want to be. And we have both declared we no longer are playing small. We don't. We, we just can't. Right? It's, it doesn't serve us, period. It's not even about um, the roles we play as parents, as, as partners, as, as sisters. It's about us yeah. and that. But what got us to this place? Like, I think so often we forget. We think that this is some short term. Oh, maybe I'll go to therapy or maybe I've read a book or maybe I'm now following this new blog. And now I'm at this place of discovering myself. This is this is more about this is, again, a liberated journey of life. But we can't ignore of how we got here to make sure that we don't go back ever again when people are in our spaces or we are in, the, in places and spaces that we feel small. Yeah. That we have to disappear. How have did an we answer for that? get here? I, I, I you mean, know how you got there. I don't want to blame it on, you know, we blame you blame everything on the media. I blame everything <gasps> on Western culture. Like, oh, can we blame it on those two things? 
No. So the reality is, again, as I stated earlier, we can't blame everything on no. this idea of authority and dominance and point no, the finger. Because I think both of us were actually raised around people who encouraged us to be dynamic. To shine. Mm-hmm. Right? It was when we left the cocoon of that experience. I remember I was in my 20s and was told that I was too rah-rah. That was the term. Wow. You always rah-rah. I was like, what's that mean? You know, you're always like, yeah, good job. Yeah, let's get together and party. Yeah, let's celebrate this thing. I'm like, that. I'm too rah-rah. Too rah-rah. And was asked to tone it down because be it was making rah-rah. people. Yes, it was making people <laughs> uncomfortable. Yes. Because I was hosting celebration parties. I mean, honestly, the rah-rah, like any good cheerleader, you're just doing the pom-poms. You, you're not really there to take over the game. You're there to support. It's one of my powers that I, I enjoy. And I listened and I stopped. I became less rah-rah. And anybody who knows me knows that if something good is happening in your life, I'm all you in. Are going to I be feel like, oh like my you gosh. test me. I'm going to Italy. We going? When we going? That's how connected I feel to <laughs> your joy. It I'm is. like, this is exciting. Yeah. If you, if something happens that that disappoints you, I'm right there with you to try to help soothe you towards the next opportunity. That's what I do. So to be told that thing that's central to who you are is too much yeah. began a years long experience in always checking the room. Checking what was naturally in you, what you were naturally drawn to do, because it's who you are. Checking that part of you, so you were really killing a part of yourself. I was That's a, what we were doing, abandoning, abandoning a, part a part of, of yourself. Yeah, and I love your question because the the flip is, and how did we get to this space that That's says right. no more? That's right. Never again. Yet again. And I go, never again. Never yeah. again. And I can say the the tightness that I felt in my shoulders every time I left the sanctuary of my home. And entered into public spaces and spaces in that family that asked me to tone it down. I have given myself flexibility, better sleep. My body's not constricted. That's right. I walk into spaces with much more confidence to be whoever and whatever I am in that time. Yeah. That has that has loosened my muscles it's had a full it's freed body. you it's freed me okay it's liberated living ties name come on so what about for you where did you get it and then how did you get to this other side that says never again i think you were 100 percent accurate thinking about um growing up and knowing that we grew up in these places that kept us safe and that our families taught us they wanted us to they, they actually demanded that we were going to shine and be great and do all these things and never hide who you are and, and stand in this. So what if you don't be six feet tall? Be the best, you know, five, three person you can. All of those things, everything that we were taught. And then we get to other spaces and even having, you know, being on an HBCU campus, still that uplift and that rah-rah was behind me. Something happened when we left those sacred spaces. And getting into a place and and, and, and being part of the next phase of my life that... Um, Demanded that I was too much because I didn't fit a certain prescription uh, of what an image uh, of what a wife or mother or or a young professional should be. That criteria um, demanded that I, you know, lower the length of my skirt, that I um, walk into a room and maybe just get in and sit down. You don't have to work the room, Drea. You don't always have to work the room and because smile. They hide everybody. You don't have to smile. People don't need to see People you. People don't need to see you. That also meant, um, you know, you don't have to be so proudful and boastful about the things that you've done. People will know. Be a quiet achiever. Be a quiet achiever, which means, you know, you don't, some, some stupid and simple things. I know I never say that word stupid. I'm going to say it now. Referring to this act and this behavior that I was doing. You know, I'm not going to update my resume. You know, I don't need to put all those accomplishments on there. Playing small, disappearing. So so that translated in like, oh, I don't I don't even remember the things that I accomplished. I don't even remember the the, the, the places that, you know, the curriculum that we design or speaking in front of these thousands of people. It's not on my resume because, you know, we don't need to say all those things. People will naturally know who I am and they will naturally um, see my successes. Yes. This, is this the good and kind, humble servant? This is the good, kind, humble servant. And you let people see you for who they are because you're supposed to turn it down because some something about you makes um, makes us feel uncomfortable. You don't always have to be 
the center of attention, Drea. What a really? <laughs> That's that is totally opposite of kind of what my grandfather taught me and my mom taught me. Not not in a way of you know go in and 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 you just suck up the whole room. But what? Why couldn't I? Because if it's in me to just be, whatever that feels like, whether that's a rah rah for you or me, just being. And I can't no longer uh, minimize my presence in spaces. I just can't. Or accomplishments, or or feelings, or, or being opinionated. It's another one that that that's part oh, of right. my life. Too many opinions. Too many opinions. Right. You're too opinionated, and then those opinions somehow become like, oh, you seem aggressive, or you seem a little bit too vocal. Like you you always have something to say. You always have an opinion. So pull that back. Let other people take the stage. Let other people shine. I'm shaking my head, but I know what you're talking about. So what happened and what shifted? I don't know, but that shift, that liberated, we, no more, no more. I have a friend who several years ago literally, literally said, I was telling these stories to him and he said, so, you know, and he knows who my grandfather is. And he said, so you obviously forgot who you are, right? Mm. Did you forget mm. where you came from? Mm. He pulled the Black Panther he on you. Pulled the, he pulled the Wakanda Black Panther. He pulled it. <sighs> T'Challa, did you forget who you are? And he said, Drea, did you forget who you are? And I said, no, no, wait, wait. And I remember the conversation that day. And so thank you, Harold Lyon. Shout out to you for reminding me of who who I am and and challenging me and saying, uh, no, it's not who you are. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Think about all that playing small that you're doing to make Mm -hmm. other people feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. All that minimizing and disappearing that you've done for decades because of what? Because they can't handle it? Then they're not your people. Then they're not. And when and when we tighten up our fence and those boundaries, right? I have to believe that which we are seeking is seeking us. Yeah. There are people who are looking to be in relationship with folks they can freely praise. Yes. People they can freely fall down in front of. Yes. People they can freely enjoy. People whose presentation of themselves they can trust because they know I'm getting the real you. Because other than that, they're getting this sort of modified, constricted, yeah. contorted. Version of me, right? Or a version of me that's not always standing in truth, right? Because if I'm truthful, you know, and in truth, there comes this idea of growth. And and we're not talking about just like not being self-aware. I mean, we know how to enter into spaces in certain situations. It's not what this is about. But folk will tell you that you don't need to do that. Why do you have to do that? And then my question now is for people, why, (laughs) why don't you show up in who you are? Like, why don't you be? Do I even know the real you? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. And do, do I even know the real me? I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm learning who that real right. me is. Anyway, yeah. I've, been, I've been in this yeah. play for so long. I'm getting to know myself again. Yeah. So I think that's the question to our listeners, right? I do. Is the one that you posed. How did we get here? And how are we getting beyond it? How are we moving beyond disappearing? Mm. And again, it's not always caused by somebody else. Oh. We hand over the disappearing guard do you mm-hmm. and say make me small make me disappear i like that twofold how are you disappearing and then how are you showing up love it okay. mm. and then until the next time tasney yes. we have to keep um i you said something earlier to me you said fire doesn't ask permission mm. to heat up the atmosphere mm. so we no longer ask permission to show up and stand in who we are in our own Isn't truth. that beautiful? That's so. Dr. Tamer. Fire does not ask permission. It so. just comes in and sets you ablaze. So Ra Ra Taz, she doesn't need to ask permission. She showed on. She just shows up. Who and don't Ra-Ra, like a party? I, you know I do. <laughs> Andrea and all her extraness. Hey, it's just enoughness. It's meanness. Yes, there you go. And that's it. So. That's it. We're here. We're here. No and, resignation, no toleration. We are here because we want to revel in it. We're not just taking it because I guess so. Nope. We want folks who are in celebration of who we are fully. That's right. So we ask you all, listeners, when have you disappeared and how are you making your way back? Love it. Until next time. This is Truth Be Told. All right, we are almost out. 
but we are certainly truth be told and we want you to remember who we are and tell other people we'd like you to like share follow and subscribe truth be told and that's going to be at truth be told pod pod at the back at truth be told pod let people know what you're listening to let us know what you like that you're listening to let us know what you don't like and then we'll see you next time and remember this is truth be told